everyone, welcome back to another video. It's your girl Meg, thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're going to do another dupe video. It's been since last summer since I did a video like this and it picked up quite a bit. A lot of people had great feedback for this video. Some people didn't like what I did. It's okay, it's fine, it's fine, we're fine. Anyway, what I'm doing today is I'm going to be testing a bunch of different products on my face side by side. I'm gonna be doing one side of my face drugstore and one side of my face high end. In fact, I have it all on my face now and can you tell which side is the drugstore side and which side is the high end side? Make your guess in the comments before you even skip ahead because I'd love to know if your guess was right. So let's see, what do you guess? What do you guess? What do you guess? I'm going to keep this intro very, very brief and let you know before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button. Let's be friends on social media. I found some really good dupes. I think that are great alternatives to some very, very popular high end makeup products. So if you wanna see awesome drugstore dupes to very popular high end makeup products, let's just keep watching. Alright, let's just go ahead and jump right in. My skincare is done. I have some primers on, ready to go. We're just gonna go and jump right into this. I'm going to be applying all of the high-end stuff on your right side, my left side, and then I'm going to be applying all of the drugstore products on my right side, your left side. I'm going to be very precise and I'll apply other steps off camera, like I said, because I do not have a full face of dupes. We're just going to only test certain things. The foundation that I'm going to be duping today is the Too Faced Born This Way foundation. It's one of my favorite, favorite foundations. It is medium to full coverage. It looks very natural. It doesn't lean very matte at all. It's a very just natural, finish that I think is good for all skin types, honestly. And then what I'm going to try to compare it with, which I think is very similar, but I haven't tried it side by side on my face yet, is the Maybelline Dream Radiant Liquid. I tried this out and did a foundation wear test on it and it reminded me a lot of this foundation once the day was over and I was like, wait a second, these seem so similar. So. These are the two that I'm going to be comparing today. I think just putting this straight on my face is really what's gonna show you instead of a swatch on my hand. Okay, I have two different makeup sponges. I'm going to use pink on drugstore side and black on a uh, high-end side. So I'm going ahead and apply the Too Faced Born This Way foundation on the left side of my face. We'll speed up certain parts of this. As you can see just from application, it has a really nice uh, coverage, but it also d looks very skin-like. It's very dewy at first, but it settles down and it looks very natural as natural as a medium to full coverage foundation can look. Now I'm gonna be going in with the Maybelline Dream Radiant Liquid and then we'll just sort of compare and see what, how we feel about the two. The shades are different. I also have to say right now, this is darker than the Too Faced one and I don't get it because I think these run a little dark. So just be aware of that. But hopefully once we lay everything else on top of it, it'll be a little bit less of a color difference. Okay, you can definitely tell there is a color difference. This is in the shade Vanilla, this is in the shade Classic Ivory, but let's look at the coverage and the finish and sort of compare. put a little extra on this cheek and I don't know if it's because this cheek needed more coverage than this cheek. I don't think the coverage is any different though at all and like they feel the exact same on my face right now. So just upon first impression, these remind me so much of each other. I don't know if the ingredients are similar. They probably don't have the exact same formula of ingredients, but we're gonna look at is this a great alternative? Is this similar in coverage and finish? You wanna try the Too Faced Born this way, but you don't want to spend a lot of money and want a similar effect. So far, 
I do think this is good. I will say with Maybelline foundation sometimes they tend to aggravate my skin and I'm not sure exactly why. This happened to me with one of their stick foundations where I would use it a couple days in a row and I noticed breakouts and the only thing that I changed in my routine was this foundation. I've worn this a couple of times and I did not notice anything but I will report back if I did react to this at all, we will see. I just used a little bit of my Charlotte Tilbury color corrector in the shade Peach, a little under both of my eyes to prep for my concealer. And today's concealer that we're going to be duping is the Too Faced Born This Way, another Too Faced Born This Way product. This is the multi-use sculpting concealer. I have this in the shade Vanilla. And the dupe that I have for it today is the CoverGirl True Blend Undercover Concealer. I've compared these a lot before. I even have a blog post on my favorite concealer dupe Oops, this is in it. I just haven't gotten on YouTube and showed this before and I figured I would show this especially using the foundation. I love both of these. This is probably my favorite concealer. It's super high coverage, just like Shape Tape is, but it is not nearly as drying. So if Shape Tape is too dry for you, definitely give this a try. The CoverGirl one is one I reach for constantly because I feel like they are so similar in the fact that they give high coverage, they have a huge doe foot applicator, and they provide great coverage without ever feeling dry or cakey or anything under my eyes. So this is what I'm gonna be duping today. There might also be a slight shade difference in the concealers as well, but hopefully we'll get it blended out and that it'll look normal. So this is vanilla. I'm not gonna use a whole lot, just right there and a little on the lid. We'll speed this up. Now we are gonna go in with the CoverGirl concealer on this side. And as you can see, it's got a really nice big doe foot applicator just like the other one. And I'm using the exact same placement and amount. So naturally, like this always happens when I film, the lawn mowers show up. At this point, I'm just gonna keep talking. I also had to take a baby break. Here is the comparison of the Too Faced Born This Way concealer and the CoverGirl concealer. I'm gonna look in my mirror and analyze the situation. Like honestly, they're identical. I think this one might look a little brighter because I have them in different shades. So this is in the shade Vanilla and this is in the shade Classic Ivory. I think the Classic Ivory is a touch lighter. So that's why it might look a little lighter under this side. I am going to set my face with my Charlotte Tilbury airbrushing powder and then I'm going to go ahead and apply brows off camera. Oh, and I'm also gonna do bronzer. I'm gonna to apply my butter bronzer on both sides of my face so I'm laying products on top of both foundations and concealers that I know perform really well and I'm going to compare at the end of the day how each side held up compared to the other side so brows powder and bronzer that's gonna happen off camera and we'll be right back okay Brows, bronzer is done. We're gonna move on to blush. And the high-end blush that I would like to dupe today is the Becca that's called the Luminous Blush and the shade is Blush Copper. So this is a beautiful shimmery blush with copper undertones. It's a warmer toned blush. It looks a lot scarier in the pan than it does on the cheek. I love it, it's great for fall, but it also is just good for any like warm toned look that you're doing and the dupe that I found for it today is a Milani blush. This is the baked blush in the shade Rose de Oro and you can see in the pan they're a lot similar. This is a baked formula so it's got some marbling in it. This one it doesn't it's just pure shimmer. Now that we've gotten to the color products of the video I am going to swatch them on my arm so you can see the swatch side by side then I'm going to show it on the cheeks side by side as well. I will say with this one in particular, the color is not quite exact, but when you put it on the cheeks, you'll notice that it's very, very similar. Okay, this is Becca Blushed Copper right here, and then this is the uh, Milani Rose de Oro. And the main difference, this one has a little bit more of a peachier tone to it. This one looks a little bit more coppery. Like I said, the color variation in this is very slight, but the reason why I'm choosing this as a dupe is because I feel like 
a lot of people like the look of the Becca blushes, that they're very luminous and beautiful, and you can get that same effect with the Milani. So this is more of an alternative than it is an exact dupe. This is a marbled baked blush. This is not, there's some differences here, but the effect they give is very similar. All right, let's just go ahead and apply these blushes. I'm going to use different brushes for each side of my face as well, just to make sure that I am consistent and you can see that we're not mixing and mingling the product. I'm just lightly dusting that on my cheek, this is the Becca. I love that warm shimmery blush. Sometimes shimmery blush isn't for everyone, but I feel like it's really pretty for summer too, the more that I look at it on the skin. Okay, Milani is going. Ooh, Milani's a little bit more dustier, I will say that. Milani is going right here. Still the same effect, the same nice shimmer healthy looking cheek. Okay, so there's the Becca right here. I do not have anything up here. Becca, Milani, Becca, Milani. I cannot really tell a difference. So the Becca one looks a little bit smoother in texture on my cheek. This one looks a tiny bit more patchy if I'm being very, very picky. Let's just move on. I'm gonna move on to eyes, and this one is very exciting. Very exciting. Okay, I have two super exciting ones. All these are exciting, but that two I think are my most exciting. This is the Anastasia Soft Glam Palette. This eyeshadow palette is one of my favorite palettes of all time. I love how it's neutral, but it has like pops of pink in it to give a little bit of a sultry, feminine feel to it. This is a great bridal palette. This is just very sultry, feminine. That's what I love about it. It's very girly. I love the warm tones and I love the rosy tones in it. It's so, so pretty. And this dupe, I'm kind of mind blown. I haven't worn them side by side, so we'll see how they compare, but I swatched them and I'm shook. Does this or does this not look almost identical, right? Okay, this is the Makeup Revolution Reloaded Palette in Velvet Ro Velvet Rose. I'm like, um, blah, 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 blah. And it's got a lot of the same tones. The thing with eyeshadow palettes, they're very difficult to dupe because obviously you're not gonna have the exact same shades in the exact same format. In order for me to consider a, an eyeshadow palette a dupe, I should be able to create similar eye looks with it. It's more of an alternative than it is a dupe, but there's so many shades in here that I feel like are so similar. The main difference in this is you get 14 shades in the Anastasia palette, and then you get 15 shades in the Makeup Revolution one. So this is pretty freaking awesome, and I am really excited to create a look. I am going to do some swatches of the two palettes on my arm first, and then I'm gonna create a makeup look. I'm gonna speed up the eye look for you in the sake of saving a little bit of time, but I am going to swatch, I think, similar shades in each of these palettes and show you on my arm. So funny story, I was able to match the entire freaking palette. Like, I'm shook. <laughs> All 14 shades, I was able to find a dupe shade. There's only slight color variances and slight formula differences, but I was able to dupe the entire freaking palette. This side is Anastasia and this side is Makeup Revolution. I'm going to re-swatch everything and insert a picture right here on the top is going to be Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Palette, and then on the bottom are all the corresponding shades that match in the Makeup Revolution Palette. I also did this all out of order too, because I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to swatch the whole thing. No, I was able to match the entire thing. This is nuts. This is very nuts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe these swatches off my arm and I'm just gonna go ahead and create one look on this eye with the Soft Glam Palette and one look on this eye with the Makeup Revolution Palette. Just get this all off my arm. Let's just do a sped up eye look. So 
some shades in this were winners, like the mattes were great, but this, you saw me struggling with this one, this pink one, as I'm trying to dupe rose pink. I like was digging my finger in it, I was pushing it onto the skin, it just did not work as great. And then I was using this bronze shade, and then I went in with this one to, to put on this side. It's very chunky. Like it's a very different formula. I'm mostly disappointed in this shade. Like I don't know what happened, but it's just not as like rosy pink as the other side. So I laid stuff on top of it to try to make it match more. The Anastasia are by far more creamy, more easy to blend. These were a little more dustier. I'm not done actually now that I realized it. We're in a highlight on this side. I feel like I was missing the highlight. So when I was doing this eye look, I kept using different brushes, so I was not cross-contaminating, if you will, the brush, but oh my gosh. The eye look is very similar. If you were to get up close to me and really pick it apart, you could tell a difference. Looking at it straight on, yeah, there's a difference. And I didn't really create the most elaborate eye look. I just wanted to kind of blend some eyeshadows on my eyes and see what happened. So there we go. But I was disappointed in that rosy pink metallic shade. I was just not impressed by it. I was pretty disappointed. But other than that, I do think for the price of this palette and that you want to explore a little bit more with these kinds of tones, eyeshadow tones, this is definitely worth trying. I need to play with it a little bit more. A lot of them seemed a little dustier and they don't blend out as well. And this is always the case, it seems, with a lot of drugstore palettes. They just don't perform as good as the high end. And I'm such a picky person when it comes to eyeshadow. So I'm gonna default and say that this is still better. But again, if you want to try out something similar and don't wanna shell out the money, I really think that this is a good alternative. I was able to dupe every single shade and I was shook by it, but they didn't quite perform the same way, which kind of is a little bit of a deal breaker for me, so it kind of makes it less of a dupe and more of an alternative, so. I'm gonna do my lashes and we're going to finish this makeup look off with a highlighter and some lipstick. And I've got two more dupes to show you. Okay, let's take a look at the eyeshadow. Lashes and a little bit of tight lining is done, but I want you to take a look at the eyeshadow and tell me if you notice that big of a difference as far as the way that it looks. I do think this eye looks better. This is the Anastasia Soft Glam side. This is the Makeup Revolution side. I think this side looks a little more patchy. I think this side looks smoother. I will say that I created a very similar look. I was frustrated with some of the shades, but overall I do think it's a great drugstore alternative and I do think it's worth trying. So, second to last product we're gonna talk about is some highlighter. I have three actually. I feel like this video is gonna be forever long, but that's okay. We're gonna go to the Becca Champagne Pop Highlighter. I cannot open this and show you full on because it's broken and I need to fix it and my Becca highlighters always break, so I just need to figure out my life. This is a popular, everybody I think knows Champagne Pop at this point. It's got a really warm, glowy champagne look to it. And the dupe that I found, I haven't been able to dupe this product. I've been trying to dupe it for years and I couldn't until I found this product. And this is from Physicians Formula. It is the Rosé All Day Petal Glow in the shade Freshly Picked. It's absolutely stunning. So pretty. I'm gonna swatch both on the hand so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. This is Champagne Pop. This is Physician's Formula Rosé All Day and, and Freshly Picked. And this is a blended out swatch. That's Champagne Pop and that's Physician's Formula. Super, super subtle color difference. I wanna say that the Champagne Pop has a slightly bit more reflective glow to it than the uh, Physician's Formula, but the effect on the face, I really think you cannot tell the difference. So let me go ahead and just put them on. Okay, that is Champagne Pop. Gonna grab another brush and go in with the Physician's Formula. Okay, and now we have the Physician's Formula on this side. 
Let's get a little closer. Something about this side of my face. I don't know about you, but I have a side of my face that glows more than the other side. This side always glows more, so I always like pop this cheek rather than this cheek. But you can still see that they both glow. The tone, the glowiness, this is a slightly more reflective, slightly smoother beaming highlight than this one, but the tone and the shine and the reflectiveness, I honestly think are so similar that you will not be disappointed. I will also say this has a very strong rose scent, so if you have an aversion to that, stray away from this. Let's get to lips. Oh my gosh, let's get to lips. This is the very so popular Charlotte Tilbury, the Lip Cheat Lip Liner in the shade Pillow Talk. This one, is a dollar seventy nine. Well, it was when I bought it. I don't know if it'll be a dollar seventy nine, but it was a dollar seventy nine when I bought it, and it is the Essence Soft Contouring Lip Liner in the shade Big Proposal. They're both a pencil liner. I this also shook me. Let's be real. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch them on my hand for you, so you can see. The top is Charlotte Tilbury, and the bottom is the Essence. The color difference in between the two is so slight that you'd have to be an absolute psycho to notice. <laughs> like, some people are very psychotic about Charlotte Tilbury, but that's okay. We are makeup lovers. We unite over things like this. Okay, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and use this as a lip color today. I'm not even gonna put anything over it. I'm gonna try to just downward and not side to side. Okay, you guys. Like I said, you have to be absolutely psycho to know the difference because I can't really tell. I'm looking and I just can't find a difference. I will say, I've swatched these on my hand. This Charlotte Tilbury wore longer, but this is really expensive. It's like in the 30s, I think. This was. $1.79 when I bought it. It could be more when you buy it. I'm I'm like blown away. But people love the Charlotte Tilbury lip liner because it's such a super flattering, your lips have better, rosy nude pink color. That's just perfect by itself. It's perfect underneath lipsticks. You can wear it with a gloss. It's just a lovely product. And I know I love it too, but I'm just so glad to be able to find something that's a similar color. This shade seems very hard to dupe for some reason, but I'm so glad to be able to find something that I can recommend. But like I said, it doesn't last quite as long, but we'll check in and you'll see that. Lastly is I'm gonna be duping the ever so favorite, my holy grail setting spray, the Urban Decay All Nighter. I've actually duped this before, but I wanted to try it again and make sure I still liked it. And this is the NYX Matte Finish Setting Spray. I've named this as a dupe before, and I want to try it again, like I said, just because I want to reconfirm what I said years ago. Let's just go ahead and, how do you spray only half of your face? Okay. So the all-nighter is gone right there. And then there is the NYX on this side. They feel similar going on. It does seem to have a very similar finish. This feels like it settles down much quicker. This is still a little wet, but I think I also went a little too heavy handed with it. Okay, that's the final makeup look. What are our thoughts, family? Please tell me down below what you think, if you notice any differences, what you feel about this. I would love to know your thoughts. Overall, just looking very closely at myself and being very, very picky, I think the foundation looks very close. The concealer looks a little bit more creasy on the on the uh, drugstore side, like a tiny hair, but not enough to really bother me. The blush, this looks a tiny bit more patchy, but not enough to bother me. This highlighter is a little bit smoother and more blinding. This shows a little bit more texture. The eye look we've already discussed, and the lip, I cannot tell a dang difference. But overall, I do think these products as a first impression on each side of my face, I feel like they look so similar that I would definitely recommend them as drugstore alternatives to these high-end products. So that is my first impression. So let's check in at the very end of the day and see how all of these things worked and whether or not I would still recommend them. Okay. Quick check-in. 
I ate dinner and the Charlotte Tilbury lasted way better than the other, but that's okay. I might be washing this off soon, but this isn't a natural light. No studio lighting here. I think it's lasting really well both sides. What do we think? Natural lighting, drugstore, high-end side. <laughs> I gotta reapply this lip liner. <laughs> Okay, bye. We are at our final check-in. It is the end of the night and I need to wash my face and take off all this makeup. And I'm gonna look at myself closely in a mirror and just tell you my observations at the end of the day. I really cannot tell much at all a difference between the foundation because everything laid on top of it just fine. I feel like on both sides of the foundation. The concealer looks about the same to me. I felt like this one creased initially a little bit more, but I always have these little creases from expression. And that happens with every concealer, so it's kind of unavoidable. But I don't see anything worse than what normally happens due to my expressive face. Eyeshadow. Now that it's settled a little while, this is overall a smoother, better blended look than this side. They wore the same, so I don't feel like this got dusty and flaked off my face. But again, I did not go outside and I didn't really do much aside from being around the house, eating, moving around, stuff like that. And then finally, the lip pencil, the Charlotte Tilbury, and there's obviously nothing on my lips right now, but the Charlotte Tilbury one definitely wore better than the Essence one, but I cannot be mad at the Essence lip liner because I found it for $1.79. So I just cannot be mad at a $1.79 lip liner that is a complete color dupe in my opinion. The blush, the blush and the highlighter look a little bit more blended and smooth on this side of my face than the other side, but it's so subtle, I don't know. I'm just not mad at the drugstore side. The only thing I would have to say out of everything is probably the eyeshadow. It's just that bronzy color is a completely different formula than this one. And some of the eyeshadows performed a little bit different than the others, but I'm really impressed by the foundation. I really think that that Maybelline foundation is a really good dupe. The setting sprays, I feel like everything stayed in place very similarly. You know, I did say this NYX one was a really good dupe and I still stand by that. I think it's a really great dupe. The all-nighter is something that I will continually repurchase and something I have in my collection, but if you don't want to spend that kind of money, I definitely recommend the NYX. I think all of these dupes today were really, really great, solid dupes. And if it's not a total spot on dupe, then I think it's just a really great alternative to buy if you were looking at the other product and don't have the money to spend on it. So I hope this video was helpful. I'm gonna stop talking now. Anyway, um, thank you so much for watching this video. I enjoyed duping all of this makeup for you today and we're testing. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. I will see you all in my next video. Bye.